Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to install one of these onto one of these. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so on today's video, we're going to show you how to install the latest LGA 1200 chips onto a LGA 1200 based motherboard. So, for all you guys out there buying Intel at the moment, because you can't buy an AMD chip, this is going to be the one for you. Now, Intel processors do fit in a slightly different way than the AMD counterparts, so it's worth paying attention to the video to see how it all goes before you attempt your first install. So, today's video will be using a Core i3. This is the 10100. No graphics on this one, this is just the F version, so uh, you will need a graphics card if you're planning to use one of these. And motherboard wise, as you can see, we're using the MSI B460M Mortar Wi-Fi, which is a fantastic board, and this is actually a really potent combo, which you can pick up for a lot less than 200 pounds at the moment. So with that said, let's get straight into it. So first of all, we're gonna get our processor ready. So this is our processor, as you can see. And um, what you probably wanna do is to just check, make sure on the back, all of the uh, the pads are okay. There's no dirty marks or anything on there. No smudges. Try to avoid touching those. If you can, hold it on the sides by the substrate. That will keep it nice and clean. So we're ready to install our processor. So the first thing to do is to depress this lever on the side, push it right down, and holding the board or making sure it doesn't move around, push it down and pull it out to the side, and then allow the spring to kind of loosen. It is under quite a lot of tension, so it will have a tendency to spring. So if it does spring, don't worry about it too much, but if you can, try and do it in a controlled motion. Now the plastic cover on the top does need to stay in place for the time being. That will actually pop out manually and is used to protect the pins on the actual socket below. So flip it up, move the uh, arm right to the very back, and then you can lift the lid up. This will expose the pins. So as you can see there, there's the uh, the actual contact pins which make contact with the pads on the processor and you can probably just about make out as well there are some notches so there's a little notch on this side and also there's a notch on that side and that is what lines up with the notches actually on the processor so if you look at the processor you can see there is a uh, a notch just there and also there's one on that side also so those notches line up essentially the processor should have the writing, which uh, if I get the right camera angle, so you can see the writing on there, it should face the same way as the writing actually on the socket. So basically north or the top is the right correction or the right way up. So get the processor and gently lower it onto the pads and it should fall in quite nicely. You can, if you want to, use a little bit of a wiggle just to make sure that it's firmly seated. You can generally tell because the actual lugs are matching up. If it doesn't fit in properly, take it out and try again. You should find it just sits in nicely and you shouldn't need any force whatsoever. This is a ZIF socket, which stands for zero insertion force. So you shouldn't need to use any pressure whatsoever. So once you've got that in, next thing to do is to lower the clamp. So lower that down. And you'll see at the bottom here, it's a little bit further away from this screw or hex screw. And now what you need to do is to use a little bit of pressure, move the lever and gently, you'll feel a kind of a, a crunch and the CPU cover should pop off. And then you can just put a bit of pressure and push that lever back in. So now the CPU socket cover has been uh, removed and you can put that into your motherboard box just in case you need to return your motherboard. A lot of manufacturers won't accept an RMA if this cover is not included because the uh, the pins could get damaged so make sure you keep this somewhere safe just in case so that is the cpu installed in the socket and the retention arm as you can see is locked into position next thing to do depending on what cooler you're using we're going to be using the stock intel cooler um, i have actually used this before so as you can see i've cleaned up the base of it to remove any existing thermal paste so we're going to need to apply a little bit of thermal paste in our new application so what we're going to do is grab some arctic silver and because there is actually a relatively small contact point on the bottom of the cooler itself, just a, a little circle there, we don't need a lot of thermal paste at all. So just a little blob right in the center will be absolutely fine. So get your Arctic Silver. And that's actually probably a little bit too much. That should be fine. A little bit too much is better than not enough because you do need to make a firm contact across the actual 
surface of the CPU. Now you can if you want to, you can get a plastic spreader and actually spread the paste out if your paste is actually thin enough. Most people, if you're buying this brand new and you're using the stock cooler, you will find that actually on the base here, there'll be thermal paste pre-applied so you don't need to add any. So if you've already got it on the, the actual cooler itself, don't put any extra on, it isn't required. This is purely if you're doing a reinstallation. So the next thing to do is to actually install the cooler itself. Now this is where people get into a little bit of a, a problem, especially if they're re-attaching a cooler. So if you look actually at the, the retention clips, which are, there's four of them around the outside edges, you'll notice on the, uh, on the edge there, so as you can see, there is an arrow which is pointing away from the actual CPU cooler itself. When it's in this position, that is ready to be used or is in the locked position. If you want to release the cooler once it's installed, then all you do is use a screwdriver in that flat section there and you can twist it 90 degrees. And then that when it's actually, when the arrow is pointing directly at the actual fin stack or the cooler itself, that is in the unlocked position. So just to uh, kind of clarify how that works. So we're gonna put it back into the locked position, which is where it should be. So all of them, all the way around, should be facing kind of away from the actual center. So that is in the ready to use situation. So if I spin this around so you can see how it works. So you've got these little plastic lugs at the bottom and these go through the holes in your motherboard. And essentially what happens is when there's pressure on the bottom section and you push down on the top, you can see that little pin goes down through and actually pushes those other pins outward, which then keeps the cooler actually trapped onto the motherboard. So in order to release that pin, you twist this top section around. So the arrow is facing into the cooler and then you can just use a little bit of pressure and you can pull the pins back up. So make sure before you install it that all of those pins are kind of out and not in already because otherwise they will not lock into position properly and you will have uneven mounting pressure on the actual processor which will give you bad temperatures and blue screens and all that kind of weird stuff. So basically make sure that when you're ready to install, as it comes out of the box from the factory, you'll find that those should be in the kind of pointing away method or the, the kind of locked one. Hopefully it'll make sense when I actually put it on the board. So let's go ahead and do that now. So now we've got the board, uh, we've got our CPU and we've got our paste. So next thing to do is to actually install the cooler itself. So use, looking at the, uh, the plastic lugs, line those up with the tiny little holes in the motherboard. You'll see there's four of them and they're equally spaced. So you, you can put this on that way round, that way round, etc., etc. The focus at the moment is actually on the CPU. So some of this may be a little bit blurry, I do apologize, but this uh, stops the focus hunting. So what you want to do is into one corner, just pop it through and then find the other corner and put it through and then do the same and just make sure that all of them are firmly through. Now, before you actually push or put pressure actually on these mountings, it's a really good idea to actually check that the pins have actually come all the way through. So I'm gonna pick up the board now, move this away and holding the CPU cooler in, just make sure that they have actually come through. So as we can see, those plastic lugs all look to be pretty firmly through. So this section, this section, this section and this section. So just make sure that they're actually all the way through. You can, if you want to, apply a little bit more pressure in those corner sections just to make sure they're fully through. But as long as the actual, the kind of the plastic lip is kind of over the edge. Sorry if it's not focusing particularly well, but as long as the plastic is fully through, then you're absolutely fine. Now you may find if you're installing this onto a flat surface, you may not get the adequate pressure required to actually get the black pin through. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to hold the board. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in one corner, make sure it's fully pushed down, uh, making sure that the arrow is facing outwards or away, whichever way it is, and then just firmly snap it into place. So that's one down. And what you can do is once you've done that, you can actually look at the bottom and you can actually see that that pin has successfully come through. So now what we're going to do is because we've done this top one, we're going to just do it in opposing sides. So next up, we're going to do this one and just put a little bit of pressure on it. And you should hear kind of almost two snaps as it goes into place. So if we spin it around again, looking at the bottom, so you can see that's spread nicely, black pins through, 
same as that one. So now we can go ahead and do another side. So we're going to choose this one and just press down and you get those kind of double snaps. Again, check on the bottom, make sure it's come through. Yep, yeah, we've got three through now. And then flip it around and just do the final one. And you do kind of get two clicks as it goes in. So again, we'll flip the board around just to make sure. So as you can see, the, uh, the plastic edges have splayed out and the black pin is clearly visible. So that is firmly attached. And if you can see on a slightly different angle, how it's spread out. So that is how the, uh, the compression fit method works. And what you can do is you can just try and give the, uh, the cooler a slight wiggle. This is what it should look like. So we've got the Intel logo facing up, the same as the board, so that's excellent. And then what you can do is you can connect up your CPU fan connector. So depending where it is on your motherboard, uh, for this particular board, it's up in this top corner. So just plug the connector in at the top, and then you can decide what you want to do about the cable management. Depending on what RAM you've got, etc., then you can kind of tuck those wires in so they're not as uh, in your face. So there we go, that is the uh, the finished arts core game. If you want to release it once you've got it in this position, then what you'll need to do is to get either a flat-headed screwdriver, such as this, and just turn it around 90 degrees so that the arrow, which uh, you can just about make out, is actually kind of pointing towards the cooler itself, and then you can lift that up and then that will remove. So pop that out and do that again, opposing sides, and you're ready to go. So if we twist it back round 90 degrees, so the arrow is facing away, then we can just snap that into place again. And there we go, there's that double click. So there we go, that is our processor and cooling fan installed on our LGA 1200 motherboard. So there we go, there is our i3 10100F installed on our MSI motherboard. Pretty straightforward to do, just make sure you take care of some of those basics, like making sure that the plastic lugs fit all the way through the holes in the board, obviously making sure you have adequate mounting pressure across all four corners and have fun. That is the best thing to do. Building PC should be about fun, so try not to worry too much about it. If you've got any uh, concerns or anything that you feel that I didn't cover in this video, please feel free to reach out to me in the comments section below. Or alternatively, you can join our fantastic Discord community and ask any questions you like there in our technical chat rooms. So I think that's going to pretty much wrap this one up. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next Intel video. Thanks for watching.